This video will be about how to test for nystagmus and how to interpret the findings. Testing for nystagmus is an important part of the HINTS exam together with skew deviation and the head impulse test. We will start with how to test for nystagmus and afterwards we will look at how to describe and interpret the results. There are two main parts that we will look at, spontaneous and gaze evoked. Spontaneous nystagmus is nystagmus that does not have to be provoked in order to show itself. Observe the patient's eyes when they're looking straight forward. Note any abnormal movements with the eyes. This is quite straightforward. Afterwards, we will look at the gaze evoked nystagmus. We will observe the patient's eyes when the eyes look in different directions. So the first thing that you're going to do is to hold a finger up about half a meter or so from the patient's face and tell him or her to keep the eyes looking at the finger. Move the finger to one side while the patient tries to keep the eyes fixed at your finger. Move the finger back towards the center and to the other side. Remember to keep observing the patient's eyes for any abnormal movements. Now there is one important point that you need to know here. And that is that nystagmus can often be suppressed by focusing on an object. Therefore, we also want to observe the patient's eyes while the patient is not focusing on any object. There are two ways that we can do this. For the first way, tell the patient to look to the side, which side does not matter. Then hold up a blank piece of paper by the side of the patient's head. Tell the patient to try to focus on the wall as if the paper was not there. This trick makes it much harder for the patient to focus. You will have to test both sides. That is very important. An even better option than using a blank piece of paper would be to use either a pair of Frenzels or Bartels goggles. These types of goggles use high magnifying lenses, making it impossible for the patient to fix it on an object. At the same time, the examiner can clearly see the eyes like through a magnifying glass, making it easier to spot any nystagmus. Good, I hope that you understood how to perform the tests. Now to a bit more difficult part, describing the nystagmus. Describing uh, the nystagmus is very important to assess whether we have a peripheral cause or if it's a central cause. Let's start off with a quick definition. Nystagmus are involuntary and rhythmic eye movements, and it can be divided into two main phases. First, we have a phase where the eyes drift away from the target. And secondly, a movement that moves the eyes back towards the target. So that was the definition. Quite simple, but it might need some memorizing, of course. We then want to describe the nystagmus according to these three different ways. First, do we have a jerk or a pendular nystagmus? Secondly, does the eyes move horizontally, vertically, or in a rotational way? And thirdly, is the, the frequency and amplitude. There are more ways to describe it, but I'd say that these three things are the most important ones that you have to be able to describe. So let's start with whether we have a jerk or a pendular nystagmus. The more common variant out of these two, and the one that you will mostly see, is a jerk nystagmus. The jerk nystagmus has two phases, a quick and a slow phase. The eyes will first drift slowly away from the target, like this, before they quickly snap back towards the target. It will then again slowly drift away from the target, before yet again snapping back towards the target. And this will keep on going. A quick note, even though that this example shows the jerk nystagmus going sideways, it can also go up and down. A super important point is that when you have a patient with jerk nystagmus, you describe it according to which direction the eye moves in the quick phase. In this example, for instance, we had a left beating nystagmus since the quick phase went towards the left. But it can also be described as right beating, up beating or down beating. Do not forget that. Describe it according to which way the quick phase goes. For the next type, we have the pendular nystagmus. In the pendular nystagmus, there are no quick phase. Instead, the eye swings back and forward, just like a pendulum. So the eyes will go something like this.
For the next part, we will describe the nystagmus according to the direction that the eyes move. First, we have horizontal movements. The eyes will move in a horizontal plane, either to the left or right, before going back towards the center of focus. It can also move vertically. Here the eyes move either up and down, before again going back towards the center of focus. Lastly, and a quite rare variant, is the rotatory nystagmus. In this variant, the eyes kind of move around its own center before going back to how it was first. Lastly, the nystagmus has to be described according to its frequency and amplitude. Frequency refers to how often the eyes drift during nystagmus. In a high frequency nystagmus, the eyes will drift something like this. So as you can see, the eyes move quite quickly back and forward. This is compared to a low frequency nystagmus, which will look something like this. So basically, it's about how often the eyes move back and forward. Secondly, we had to describe the amplitude. Frequency was how often the eyes move back and forward, while amplitude, on the other hand, describes how far the eyes drift during each nystagmus. For instance, in a high amplitude, the eyes will drift maybe as far as this, before going back, and in a low amplitude, it will drift as far as this, before going back. Here you can see how far the difference is between the low amplitude and the high amplitude. This can also, of course, go in every direction. It doesn't have to go only to the side, but also up. The last part of this video is going to be how to differentiate whether we have a peripheral or centrally based nystagmus. First, if it is indeed a central based nystagmus, this means that the problem is somewhere in the brain itself. If the nystagmus is central based, it should prompt quick further diagnostics, as it can be a very serious cause behind the nystagmus, for instance a brain hemorrhage or a brain tumor. On the other hand, if the nystagmus is peripheral based, this means that the cause is based in the inner ear, either in the vestibular labyrinth or in the vestibular nerve. The causes here include vestibular neuritis, which is almost always a viral infection of the vestibular nerve, or it can be seen, for instance, during attacks of Meniere's disease and BPPD. Peripheral-based nystagmus is much more common than central-based. So how can we say whether we have a centrally or a peripheral-based cause? First of all, we can look at the frequency and the amplitude. A central problem will often have a nystagmus with a low frequency and a high amplitude. Exactly the opposite is seen in peripheral with a high frequency and a low amplitude. Secondly, if the direction of the nystagmus is vertical, as in it goes up and down, it hints towards a central cause. Horizontal, on the other hand, means peripheral. Thirdly, if the patient has some nystagmus, but the nystagmus disappears when they fix it at some object, then it hints towards a peripheral cause. If we have a quick face and a slow face, as is in what's typical for a jerk nystagmus, it hints towards a peripheral cause, while if we have a pendular and a rotatory nystagmus, that hints more towards the central cause. Of course, if we have the normal jerk nystagmus, but it is vertical, that hints more towards a central cause. And lastly, the central base nystagmus will not get exhausted and it will just continue, while the peripheral nystagmus can get exhausted, so it will disappear for some time after it's been there for a short amount of time. I hope this video has been educational, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them below. Cheers!